All right, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, my friends out there, guys. What's going on? It's Nora Stock Explorer going live at 8:30, as promised. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to all my friends out there. Much appreciated to all the support you guys have given me this week, this year. All my new trader friends, all my financial space YouTube friends out there. Thank you so much for your continued support. I appreciate you guys very, very, very much. Trust me, I really do. Every little like, every comment is much appreciated. And I will answer each I will answer each and every question, each and every comment, okay guys? So don't be afraid to drop a comment in the comment section. Or ask me a question, guys. If I don't know the answer, I will reach out and find the answer for you guys. Good morning, Michelle Morar. Thanks for joining me, Michelle. Good morning. It's coffee time, everybody. What's going on? Mario G. Hey, what's up, Mario G? Mario G. Yes, I am still in AMC. I'm still in AMC. I have three shares which I bought at just under $26 those are still in my TD Ameritrade account for the new account challenge and then I had 100 shares in Weeble now here's the thing guys I've been in the stock market academy for over a year now and I've learned a lot about the stock market and how to trade responsibly okay this is definitely a unicorn event it's a very unique situation however the practical person in me tells me that I need to de-risk my position okay so what do you do when you de-risk your position well you take your initial investment out I bought a hundred shares for about twelve I'm sorry about ten dollars and fifty cents so my decision was to sell half of that position to get that initial investment back and then of course I'm going to let the other 50 shares ride out. I feel like that's a practical way to move forward with it that way no matter what happens. If it shoots to the moon I'm going to benefit but if it does not, if something unexpected happens guys uh, I got my initial investment back. So that was my strategy with AMC. Um, of course, you know, I love talking about it, but also I have to protect my capital. I have to conserve my capital because my accounts are, in my opinion, more so on the smaller end, although it might seem like a lot of money to a lot of people. Uh, for what I'm trying to do moving forward, I am still trying to build capital, guys. I'm still, I'm still trying to build an account, and what I show you guys, I'd like to show you guys what I'm doing, and I try to do it in a mindful way and not in a type of YOLO or gambling type of way, right? So that's what I did. So yeah, Michelle, I still have 50 shares. I have 50 shares. They're, they're right here. You're looking at Weeble. Uh, I still have them in Weeble. I'm not going to sell that until the anticipated uh, squeeze happens, okay? So that if it does happen, that's a, that's a nice little amount of shares. I mean, that could, that could still... That could still be a nice piece of money, okay? I, yeah, I would be happy with that. I try not to be greedy or get carried away with this type of thing, guys, because there's other plays out here, right? There's other plays. As you see, I have Sundial up here. Sundial, Sundial a couple weeks ago was was looking like it was looking rough it was it was getting down near what like 80 cents now she's up at almost a dollar 30 looks like it's going to a dollar 50 and then maybe two dollars and maybe five dollars uh, I've, I've held this for quite some time a lot of people were bag holding 
Sundial. I think that is going to be one of my next plays. I may build on this position, but I think I have 200 shares of Sundial. That, I believe, is going to do good in the next uh, upcoming weeks. Of course, I have, I have about two or three shares of GME. Uh, that's sitting at 258. That could be another play because when this AMC thing plays out, I think the money, this huge amount of, of money that people are making, they're going to roll it into what is considered the next play. Good morning, Darren, a shareholder. Bond, thanks so much for stopping in. I think this, and this is going to be a massive amount of money. When, when people start cashing out AMC, I don't think they're going to completely take it out of the market. I think a lot of it is going to roll into crypto, and I think a lot of it may just directly roll into whatever uh, the community out there the apes, so to speak, and uh, Michelle, to answer your question, uh, ape or gorilla is is like a metaphor for a retail investor. That's all that is. You know, it's supposed to implicate that maybe we are like stupid, but however, there are a lot of smart, quote unquote, apes or gorillas out there making tons of money. Okay, so we're to, we're not uh bunch of stupid gorillas okay but that is uh it's sort of like a self-deprecating humor so to speak um that's what the uh apes or gorillas remember last night in your live you were asking what that is that was coined by uh i believe the wall street bets community coined that phrase of course if you watch trey's trades channel and some of the other channels they're always talking about the gorilla gang and, and the apes and the orangutans and the silverbacks, which is which is a popular type of gorilla. That's where all that terminology comes from. This little uh, kind of pop culture trivia there. But moving forward, like I said, I think I think AMC will squeeze that that what was it 11 million shares that they dropped yesterday that caused a lot of panic and concern and then of course the news came out stating that oh be warned AMC is going to drop shares of course they are if you're a company and you're trying to make it of course you're going to drop the shares when the when the share price is is at a really nice juicy price point i can't blame him as a businessman okay i can't blame him he is at the end of the day responsible for running amc okay but uh would i bring him on my channel and believe everything he says no uh, i did watch some uh, some of the interview and it was pretty hilarious because at one point adam aaron dropped his webcam and you could see that he was sitting there with a shirt and tie and no pant and uh no shorts on so i don't think that was planned out and they're they're trolling him pretty hard on the internet today with that photo someone screenshotted the photo of that very moment when he <laughs> dropped the the uh, webcam and they said no shorts uh look something you know they're just going crazy with that um Anyway, that was that was uh, that was like a little lighthearted moment within the video. But now uh, I feel like when you just bring in these CEOs on, you have to be careful because of course they of course they what they're telling you is biased, and they're going to tell you what they want you to believe, right? Um, I think it's nice that he did give Trey the time, you know, his time, which is valuable. And uh, not every CEO will do that, so that's fantastic. I do love watching CEO interviews. However, you do have to realize that everything they say is, of course, going to promote the business and be skewed uh, in favor of, you know, the, whatever they're trying to push out, whatever uh, message they're trying to push out. And I think sometimes... Uh, you know, you just have to be careful and, and look at both sides of the story. Look at, you know, you, I mean, in a way, some people think you can't be on both sides. You can't be on the retail investor side and then also be on it, be, be uh, at one with the corporate 
side of things and the millionaires and the billionaires, right? So I don't know how I feel. It was, uh, I didn't find it entertaining. I thought it, at first, you know, like when he brought on Jordan Belfort, I thought that was, I thought that was entertaining. However, I felt like they kind of trolled him a little bit. I feel like when Trey went on Meet Kevin, I felt like he, like, I don't know. I just, people don't always have your best interest in mind. So uh, at the end of the day, I think the guy will be fine. But um, anyway, getting back to what I was saying, that that share offering when they were promising, oh, we won't drop shares, and then a couple weeks later they dropped shares and the Wanda thing and everything, of course they're going to drop shares. They don't owe Trey anything. They don't owe the, the uh, investing community a dang on thing. They really don't. Hey, Michelle, did you see where Iger sold his Disney shares? Wow, really? He sold some of his Disney shares or, or all of them? That's, well, I mean, he is retired. I guess at, at some point, everybody's going to cash out their stocks. Some of them. Okay, well, you know. He's probably enjoying some of his um, tendies. He's probably ridiculously rich, and he can do that. Uh, I really am not concerned for Disney. Uh, you know, you know, AM, not AMC. Uh, Amazon bought MGM, so it appears as though Amazon is wanting a piece of that. Um, you know. A piece of the movie business in, in, in a certain way so I don't know if Amazon has set their sights on being a streaming uh, you know being the top dog as far as the uh, the movie streaming and things of that nature but I I know Disney Plus is a really really strong player I mean Disney Plus I mean they just they just are smashing the subscriber numbers and 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 definitely outperforming uh, their uh, goals as far as the the subscribership. So uh, I wouldn't worry about Disney as an investment. I feel like it's a stable investment. I don't think it's gonna like be a high growth investment. But uh, you know, what I would like to see is for Disney to bring back the dividend. They really should because I know once they get the uh, all this revenue from this year, they should be sitting pretty to uh, to give the investors back that dividend, and I think that would be good good PR for the company to do that as well. I'm glad you got in, Michelle. I'm glad that you uh, did get some shares. I have some other friends that got some shares. I have some friends that got in Dogecoin back when I mentioned for them to do it. Now, a lot of people, they don't take your advice. You know, they're just like, you're, you're you know, ah, you're investing in that. That's You're going to lose all your money or whatever. But my friends actually took my advice and they're up a couple grand now. I mean, I, I am very happy for everybody that has taken my advice. And of course, I say I'm not a financial advisor. All I can do is show you what I'm doing. But if you look back, go ahead and look back at some of my videos. Look back even back in, um, you know, October, November of last year. All of my call-outs have hit. All of them. Every last one of them. Ag Eagle back then was at $1.98. Look at it. It's over $5 now. That was a, a, a triple bagger plus, right? You have uh, Bio Nano Genomics. Okay? I made over a grand on that. Um, I mean... I'm trying to think of Ford and GM. I did a video about Ford and GM when Neil was really hot last year. Neil was around $40, and I said, guys, don't count out Ford and GM. This is before anybody was talking about the Ford Lightning 
or or the GM Hummer or the new EVs. I said, don't don't think they're not a player in the EV game. And here you go. Those have been rock solid. They've been steadily moving up, especially Ford. Ford's had a fantastic past uh, month or so. Uh, the Ford Lightning, I think, is going to, I think that thing is going to do amazing. People are going to love that. But anyway, you look back and watch some of my older videos, guys. I'm not just um, out here you know just hyping things if i'm talking about it most likely i also invested in it and i can sh my positions my positions are listed on the left hand side of the screen guys you can see i put my money where my mouth is you can see i have nike nike has done nothing but slowly move up since i mentioned it this is the month that the nike dividend comes out i was talking about it last month to start building your position. Nike has slowly started moving up. Okay. The Sundial. Another one I told everybody you should hold. If you bought into it. Don't sell it at a loss. Hold it. It is moving up. Okay. Palantir. Palantir. I was talking about Palantir when it was $12 and some change. Palantir has become wildly popular right now. Um, of course, Coke. Coca-Cola is, is, is a dividend king, and I have not made a video on Coca-Cola, but I like it. I believe in it. I like to keep building on that. Um, Castor Maritime, because of the split that they did, it did take quite a loss. However, pre-market, it's up almost 2%. I believe that's going to start inching its way up. That might be a good time. To get it might be a good time to get in because I think uh, that's my favorite time to get in stocks after they take a hit or when they're down and then just ride that momentum back up. Uh, it's, that's a great uh, strategy, but only if you believe in it. You know what I mean? Only if you believe in it. Of course, you know I love Dogecoin, which I spoke about. I said anything under thirty-three. Would be a winner. Winner chicken dinner. Look at Dogecoin up at 36. Uh, of course, it's it's wildly volatile. It goes up and down. However, Elon Musk is working on making this uh, more usable and more. Uh, I don't know. It it seems like he is trying to make it to where you can. You can somehow, while you're mining Dogecoin, use that energy. I don't know. It's some sort of incentive. I just think this is going to be a hot thing. I love Dogecoin. I believe in the future of it. Some people don't, but I just personally like it. But I was uh, in it well before this price, and I'm holding. I'm holding that. So if you guys got in Doge, congratulations. I think you're going to do well this summer, especially that later on in the summer. I think you'll do well. Hey, Disruptive Wealth. How you doing, man? Thanks for stopping in. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, most I would say most of the stocks I talk about, I, I also go ahead and I, and I buy them. Um... So, I want what's best for me, of course, but my friends that are watching, of course, I want to I wanna give you some good stock picks as well, or suggestions. Just thanks for the watch list, really, because I don't tell anybody what to buy, right? Guys, please don't forget this to uh, smash the like button so this uh, live stream can get out to more people. I can get more people in the chat. That would be fantastic. I appreciate if you guys would just take a second and tap that like button. Uh, if you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell too. When you hit that notification bell, it'll tell you when I go live. And the market should, uh, we will be moving when the market opens moving a little quicker but right now you know it's it's kind of pre-market a little on the slower side but uh 
I think AMC will have a good day today. I think so. Um, of course, I wouldn't be buying in at this price, but that's just me. That's just me. I what I have, I'm already locked in with what I have. I'm not adding to the position. Uh, I just I don't think I'm going to be adding to the position. I'm going to just appreciate what I have, and I've already, like I said, de-risked my position by taking back out my initial investment and letting the house money ride. So I'm riding out on house money on AMC. Have not done that with GME. I'm all in on uh, on uh, GME. I'm not ready because I think this has a lot more room to go. Uh, especially since GME has not spoken about releasing any shares, right? GME has not spoken about doing a share offering, and they didn't last time, which actually would have been very opportune for GME to do a share offering. Of course, when, when it was ripping uh, the last time that it spiked up, that would have been a fantastic time for GME to drop shares, but they just don't seem to... Uh, I don't know, they just don't seem to be focused on that. So you may see a lot of money rolling from AMC over to GME, you know, because there are fears of AMC continuing to drop to, to do these share offerings, right? Hey, good morning, Tyler. Good morning. Tyler Myers Finance, guys, if you're not subscribed already, which I know a lot of you guys already are, but if you're not, go ahead over to Tyler Myers Finance. You got to put in finance because there's other Tyler Myers channels uh, on there. Okay, so Tyler Myers Finance, and he's going to be starting a business and doing updates every Monday on how he's building his new business. I don't want to spoil it. I'll let you guys go over to his channel and watch his last video where he will explain what he's doing. I'm excited for those updates, man. You are, I know you're going to be successful. I could just see it in you. It's that is going to be uh, wildly popular. And I think you're going to get people not only from finance. Uh, that are into the stock market, but you're going to get a crowd on your YouTube that are interested in, in you know, small business and building a business and entrepreneurship and things like that. So that was a fantastic idea. Good morning, Timmy. Good morning. I went to Wawa this morning. And if you guys don't know what Wawa is, it's basically like sheets where it's like, uh, loves or it's basically a gas station with a sandwich shop inside um they're only in a few states but of course they originated from pennsylvania which is where i grew up in philadelphia and now they have the wawas in florida which thank goodness and if you remember back when the pandemic started, I'm probably not even supposed to say that word, but I'm not monetized yet, so it doesn't matter. Uh, back when that started, I used to come in with this giant uh, coffee uh, canister. What do you call that? Like, you know, that those thermal coffee containers, right? I would come in, and it's a, it's a big one. It's, <laughs> it's, like, huge, right? It fits, like... 10 cups of coffee in it and I go in I go to this Wawa that I go to near my house every single day for something or another or for gas right so so I used to bring in my I call it my coffee trough <laughs> I bring in my coffee container right and I fill that bad boy up I like I like tap out like like one of their whole coffee canisters with my, with my coffee container right and I put the cream and sugar, and I'm like, I got coffee for days in that thing. And my friend at the counter, she's, she, she, she's cool. She don't give me any trouble. She's like, yeah, you're good. It, they charge me for a refill. There's only one girl there that, that always tries to stop me and tell me that's not a refill. <laughs> I won't say her name. Um, 
I love most of my uh, friends over there at Wawa, but there's this one girl, and I just won't get in her line because I don't like dealing with her. But, uh, you know, you weren't allowed to do that after the, the uh, pandemic hit. It was like, no, it's unsanitary, no refill cups. If you've gone to any of these convenience stores, you'll see it says, no convenient, no convenient, you know, no refill mugs. And you see a little signs everywhere. Well, uh, they lifted the mask restriction if you're supposedly if you're vaccinated and of course so today was the first day I went back in with my giant coffee container and I filled it up and I didn't have any problem so life is starting to get back to normal oh you're welcome Tyler anytime anytime I love giving shout outs to to other YouTube channels especially if you support my channel I'm, I'm totally um, on board with giving a shout out and sending people to your channel what do you think to mr foot's next tv appearance today i think humble is going to slowly move move forward i like humble because uh it has that global footprint it it ha it you know it's hitting markets that have been underserviced so i think it will do well I'm not in humble right now, but I did make a lot. I made a nice bit of money uh, buying TSNP, which was the, what humble was. The SPAC was called TSNP, and I sold that. I think I sold that at the top. I got really lucky. I just felt like it was time to sell TSNP, and I took my profits. And I did that on my TD Ameritrade trade new account challenge, which is what. It, is really giving that account a boost by doing that yeah it is Tyler I probably won't even drink drink all of it but it, but uh I fill that bad boy up again I got my money's worth today <laughs> yep got my money's worth today guys thanks for joining the live stream any anybody buying anything today? I was tempted to buy more Sundial, but uh, I think I'll just ride. I think I have 200 shares of Sundial, which uh, because of the the price of it, it's not that much. But you know, it should it should make make me some tendies, as they say. I'd love to see your uh por a portfolio reveal, Tyler, but I don't know if that's something that you're uh that you're comfortable with or that anything that you would do but uh i feel like you have some great stock picks i'd like uh to hear what your uh stock picks are or maybe what's on your watch list if you want to share that um i like following humble i know i know lucas murphy who's uh, a friend of mine on YouTube who has encouraged my channel since I started he's very very highly uh, interested in covering humble the tickers HMBL um, and of course he covers the dr the uh, drone industry which I'm which I'm a big fan of as well because that's just an emerging uh, industry it's just it's something you're not really seeing now, but I guarantee you by next summer you're going to start seeing these delivery drones buzzing around. It's a, it's a great time to invest in some of the uh, some of the drone stocks, such as Ag Eagle, Dragonfly, and Alpine Four Holdings. Um, there are there are others, of course. There's Aerovironment, which is which Kathy Wood added to the Arc X, which is her space ETF. It's called Aerovironment. Uh, that's a great one. I don't have that one, but that's a good pick. I'm hoping AMC rips today. I hope. Uh, I you know I just pray that people out there that truly truly. Um, you know need the money maybe they're they're helping someone that can't work or for their children 
you know, there's a lot of people that have a lot of faith in AMC and it will be life changing for them. And I, I really pray and hope that this happens because these opportunities don't, uh, they don't happen all the time. And, uh, you know, I just hope, I just hope it hits. I hope it hits for everybody. And they make, and they make some nice money. I hope they're able to sell it at a profit. You know, there are going to be people that are going to take a loss on AMC. I won't be one of them because I have already de-risked my position. However, there are people that maybe they will buy in on the top, at the top, whatever that may be, right? When you get emotional and you start watching this, watching these trades play out and you start... I mean, it gets very exciting, guys. You start seeing the, these green candles build up and you start getting excited. Your heart rate starts going up. You're, like, pumped up. And, you know, people just get on their computer or they grab their phone and, they, you know, impulsively they want to they wanna add to their position. And somebody is going to buy a bunch of shares at the top and then... When it does dump, and it will, I mean, it will, um, what goes up must come down. Somebody's going to get uh, get in on the hype of it, and they're going to buy at the top, and they're not going to be able to, to unload those shares, and they are going to take a loss. So, um, now's the time to look at your position and go ahead and and de-risk a little bit if the, if you know if you truly can't afford to lose it but you know uh, affording to lose it and you know being smart i mean yeah i could afford to lose my whole amc position i could it's not going to take food off my table or anything like that but why why you know why do that when you have an opportunity to de-risk and take out your initial investment? You know, you can easily see what you put into it. Whatever whatever you spend on those initial shares, like I know mine were ten fifty. So, um ten fifty, you know times that by you know, whatever, whatever, however many shares it's going to take for you to sell to get that money back. And then you can relax. You don't have to break a sweat when this thing takes a, what I call the Dumperoonie McFatty, right? And, uh, and, I mean, those days are coming. Uh, I don't think it's coming today or next week, but that, that time will come. Uh, Peter DiCarlo did an excellent video on um, AMC and his take on it. I believe he did about a, almost a 20 minute video on the topic. He's an excellent mentor. Um, I will highly recommend going to his page Peter DiCarlo D-I-C-A-R-L-O He deserves a hundred thousand or more subscribers he really does he has amazing content but uh unfortunately a lot of great youtubers out here although he's doing very very well because he runs capitalist academy and he's doing well for himself but uh you know you have new youtubers that take off that have been on a relatively short amount of time and then you have people that have been working hard for years that deserve a hundred thousand or more subscribers that uh that simply don't get ex the exposure on youtube because of the algorithm and the way youtube works if you don't hype what the hype stock is if you don't hype it up if you don't talk about uh neo and amc and tesla and you know, if you talk about um, being a responsible trader, it's not, they're not going to push that, that uh, content out. You have to have the buzzwords and stuff like that. So you have to, and when you're a YouTuber, you have to have that balance, right? You have to do some videos for it, sometimes for the attention aspect of it. But you also want to give good 
quality uh, content, right? You don't just want to, you know, say the same thing a hundred other people are saying. Are you truly uh, taking something away from, are you going to make, is that video going to be memorable? Are you going to actually learn something? I try to bring value and actually, uh, teach some fundamentals, some principles in my videos, as well as sharing, you know, stock picks that I like and, uh, having some fun too, guys. I like to get on here and meet people and laugh and have a good time and, and make money. Tyler says, I also do a lot of long, short pairs trading. Okay. My whole thing is hedging as much risk as I can while still having my hands on a lot of different asset classes. Very good. Yeah, I would love to, you know, actually see some of your uh, stock picks. It sounds like, it sounds, well, you have a background, Tyler has a background in financial advising. I mean, that's, that's an, that's an amazing foundation for being a trader and investor, right? It's, it's, I, from what I understand, it's not easy to become a, a certified financial advisor. There's there there's quite a bit of of testing involved in and learning, you know, a lot about retirement and and uh, all different things like that. So much respect to you, Tyler, and I, I really respect your entrepreneurial endeavors, um, especially at your age. It's the best time to go ahead. And take a shot at it. You only have one life, right? I always like listening to Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, he he's the owner of Vayner Media. He's on YouTube a lot. He is on every social media platform because he is a huge advocate of using social media. And I like that Tyler stated that with his marketing of his new business, that he is going to use. Uh, many social media outlets in which to to promote and and share his business and that that is really where the future is going guys you have to be on social media you have to be on social media you have to be proficient with it you can't leave out instagram you can't leave out twitter uh, you have to be, you have to be kind of tapped in. Even some people use, uh, TikTok. Okay. Um, this is how you get your name out there, right? And many of these, uh, social media outlets, they are free, right? They are free to use. There is even software out there where you can coordinate all of your social media, uh, and, and it will share, what you create on all of the social media platforms for you. I know there is some sort of fee, you know, it's not free, but if you want to, that may be something that, uh, if you're trying to build a business or, you know, build a name for yourself, that may be well worth it to get that added exposure on these different social media outlets. By the way, guys, I am on Twitter. It's, uh, I'm Philly underscore Orlando on Twitter. I'd love if you guys would follow me on there. Sometimes I post my trades and I share some interesting, uh, tweets about companies that I'm invested in on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Philly Orlando, all one word. Feel free to visit my Instagram and send me a request. I'll be happy to add you guys on there. Nora, do you do a good job of using Gary V's 90 second positive thoughts promoting. I love Gary V. I'm glad you know who that is. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tyler's, uh, Tyler's saying Michelle Mraz. <laughs> 
Yeah, I love Gary V. I mean, people. some people have a shorter attention span, right? Nobody wants to watch an hour-long YouTube video, right? If you can get on social media and say some meaningful things in under a minute, uh, I mean, first of all, it's free exposure to whatever message you're putting out, whether it be your business or whether it be your YouTube channel, right? And uh, most likely people will watch the whole minute's worth because it's only a minute. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right? It's only a minute. Guys, give me one second. I'll be right back. Guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. I want to do a little, a little hot shot on my coffee here. Feel free, guys, to share your Twitter or your Instagram name on on in the uh, live chat. So my other friends can find you guys if they'd like to follow you, they will find you. Yeah, that's good advice. Um, I know you're on LinkedIn, Michelle, because you do you do life insurance and supplemental insurance so yeah that's good good to be on LinkedIn medical supplements <laughs> medical supplements baby I'm telling you Michelle if you came to Florida you'd be killing it We got all the snowbirds down here, and they would they'd get a kick out of you. You have a, a great, fun personality. I think you'd do really well. If you can ever convince Timmy to come and move to Florida, or who knows, you guys, maybe you guys can do the snowbird thing, right? Where you keep your house in North Carolina, and uh, you come down here for the winter, get yourself a, a nice little town home down here, or whatever you guys want to get. Um, take your pick. I mean, there's, I mean, housing market's booming right now. Um, Toll Brothers is building houses all over the place, um, and then and then uh, drive back, drive back up there in the summer. Cause the summers here, they can, they're, who they're, they're kind of rough, but I acclimated to it. Thanks, Tyler. Yeah, I appreciate you stopping in, and I look forward to your video on Monday. Really do. Best of luck with you, with the business, and um, I will talk to you soon, Tyler. Have a great one. I 
can't believe Virgin Galactic has moved up into the $30 range. Um, I was like, wow, because I, I thought I, I got stuck buying it at like 29 and I was bag holding space for, for a good minute. And now I'm actually um, I'm up a little bit. And part of me wants to just cut it and take what I what my profits. But then another part of me is like, it's moving up for a reason, you know, like something something's going on. Like them somebody must know something. I know they're gonna get into that supersonic flight as well. They are, they are building some sort of, um, something comparable to the Concord, uh, Virgin Galactic. And if you listen to Kathy Wood, she actually did mention that she believes that that will be profitable first. The supersonic, like the, like the, what is, am I using the right word? Supersonic flight will be more will be profitable before the their space travel portion of the business will be profitable so i really did listen uh to her saying that and she didn't say specifically that virgin galactic was was going to be the one but obviously they are working on it and they even they are partnered with rolls royce um another stock that's on my radar because they are working together to build this sort of concord type uh plane that could take you i think it said from la to london or so i forget what the stats were but it's just like basically two hours and you're in a city that you could never get to in like two hours like it's like super super fast i could see that being wildly profitable yeah i you know that's that's awesome you imagine flying to like i don't know from floor okay so like from florida Flying to like, I don't know, like England or something in like three or four hours, like some crazy fast time, like just take you to Europe and back. That's that. And people with big money would pay that price. People in business, they would, they would pay that price. I'd pay the price to go to go on one of the, the uh, space trips. I would love to do that. But of course, it's a uh, hundred. What what is a ticket? A hundred thousand dollars. It's not like I have a hundred thousand dollars spare spare money. Um, wealthy people would spend it. I would I would happily spend it for that life experience, right? But I think with the virtual reality and uh, you know the VR goggles that they have, Facebook has Oculus. Uh, there are other companies working on the virtual reality space. Uh, I believe you will be able to have these video game type technology with the haptics and the virtual reality that will basically give you the same experience, right? So maybe they could live stream from space and you have the VR goggles and you feel like you are right there in the ship you know you feel like you're there and then l360 view i mean i could totally see that being being a thing uh, i'm pretty excited to see what they can do excuse me in the gaming space as far as the virtual reality you have elon musk saying that uh, virtual reality and reality will be nearly indistinguishable, which is fascinating to even consider that. Sundial, I think, could go to three dollars easily. I really do. I think it could easily go to three. I really do think so. Guys, also, if you'd like to join, 
the Capitalist Academy stock market group, he, he just sent out the notification that he's going live. I, I'm always tuned in uh, to see what's going on in there. I have the link in my banner and also the, in the description. You can use the code ACADEMY90 for 90% off of your first month. It's normally $100 a month, but he has the black box uh, data. He has 60 hours of courses and lectures. He posts his trades live. I w uh, many of them are, are hits. They, they make good money, not really nice money. He'll teach you how to sell puts, uh, teach you how to make money in a downturn. Anything you would want to know if you're brand new uh, to trading and investing. It's an excellent resource, especially for your first month, because you can do the first month and watch all the courses. And then if you want to, you can cancel. But I think you'll really like the Discord, the private Discord. And I think you'll stay. But if you do decide to do it, please use my link, because I get a small... Uh, referral bonus maybe fifteen dollars or so which will help me buy equipment for my channel so I'd appreciate the support if you guys want to do that that would help me out a lot and if you do join let me know uh, in his private discord that Nora sent you I will highly appreciate it I love it I it's one of the best things I ever found okay and I'm I'm not just saying that I truly enjoy it what a massive wealth of knowledge in that group guys so don't that that is a great value yeah I see sundial moving up towards three dollars I think you can hit a double bubble with sundial in a relatively short amount of time because I think it is only a matter of time before they legalize the Jack Jackson you guys know what word I'm talking about uh, nationally there it's gonna be legal very very soon I mean look at the amount of revenue that the country could make on one tax revenue uh, I think that is the catalyst Michelle like you said what are the catalysts I believe uh, the decriminalization uh, bill and then next would be you know of course uh, the nas uh, nationwide legalization, not just state by state, which many states, you know, it is legal. Uh, they need to make that national, especially decriminalized, because people uh, actually did jail time for what I consider trivial uh, possession charges of the you know, the Jack Jackson, so, um, yeah, I hope that happens, I don't think anyone should have a felony because they had, uh, you know, a pocket full of, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying, I, I just, it's a natural, it's a natural substance from the earth, you know, as long as you're not out killing anybody. You're probably at home busting a busting a groove on 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 the snacks. Bust busting a groove on the <laughs> mess it. Tearing up some some pie or something. You know what I mean? <sighs> Timmy knows what I'm talking about, right, Timmy? <laughs> oh man. What a morning, what a morning, what a morning. It's a beautiful time to be a trader and an investor. I'm very grateful for for the money that I've made. And I do occasionally donate to animal charities because I, I believe in uh, doing that type of thing. Do, use a little something something to help somebody or help out the animals do some especially the dogecoin if you hit on the dogecoin help out a dog charity 
I sent a donation in to Pet Helpers, and I, if, uh, of course, you know, if it goes over a dollar, I'll, I'll send them another donation, <clears throat> or a different one. I like Harley's Dream, that's another charity that I like. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm gonna hop off, because I'm gonna head over to, uh, to the Capitalist Academy, uh, live stream, and, uh, hopped on with those guys, so I'm gonna end the live stream, I appreciate you guys joining me for the morning chat, this was great, I've been on here almost an hour, uh, really appreciate all of you guys, uh, much love, thanks so much for watching my videos, I'm gonna do the new account challenge week 22 video later today, and I'll tell you what I bought this week, I did buy a stock yesterday, so I will let you know what I bought, something I have mentioned uh, but something it's actually a new stock for the portfolio one that I have not bought yet so I think you'll like like that stock pick and I will talk more about it because it's something that I'm passionate about and yeah I'll be catching you guys on your channels and uh, don't forget to smash the like button guys I love you peace